Hi everyone. So I was watching one of the Julian Elliot videos. How do you pronounce his surname? Is it Elliot? Elliot? I'm probably getting that wrong, aren't I? Anyway, I'm sure you know who I mean. And he was designing and building a uh, USB to serial converter board, which I thought was quite interesting and it's the sort of thing I wanted to do, but I've just... Um, wasn't too sure how to go about it, wasn't sure what chip to use. I've got so many questions, I was really, didn't think I was ready for this yet. But watching his video um, made me feel like it looks reasonably trivial. So I thought I'd give it a go. So I started putting a schematic together. I'll just quickly go over what I've done. Um, so I've got a USB connection here and the same as him, I'm gonna do that as through, through hole. Um, I, I think I've ordered some of those already. I'll probably see them in a mailbag soon. Um, then we've got the CH340. Um, now I've selected the B because I believe that doesn't require uh, an external crystal. So I think it just keeps things simpler. And also I don't think um, JLC PCB have the one in stock that he was using anymore i think he already mentioned that and i believe the b is in stock so if i do want to get this assembled that should be okay um so basically we've got the i'm hoping i've got this right if anyone's got any advice on this i'd appreciate it um we've got the d minus and d plus well, i think that's data minus and data plus so i think uh, i've got d minus going to um, ud minus over here and then I've got D plus going to UD plus on the uh, CH340. Um, we've then got uh, TX and RX coming out. So we've got the USB coming in and then we've got this um, TX and RX coming out, which I always call UART. Again, I don't know if that's the right terminology. Um, so I've just used a couple of uh, net flags, I think these are called, um, and they'll then uh, connect to these down here, TX and DX, TX and RX. And I'm taking them over here to a, a breakout header. Um, I've put a couple of LEDs on here and I was super confused by these because they seem, well, again, uh, Julian was using some 1K resistors and I've seen other people use quite high resistor values on surface mount LEDs. And when I done the maths, uh, I thought you needed a, quite a bit lower value than that but um, I'm, I'm going with 1k and we'll we'll see what happens um, they're just tied to the, um, the the ground on them or the um, what would we call this the sort of low voltage side is going to the signal lines so the signal lines will be um, kind of pulling these down again I'm probably using the wrong terminology there um, that is really about it. Um, it. Looking at the data sheet, it seemed to indicate that you can power this chip from either five volt, which is what I'm intending to do, or you can power it from three volt, which is this V3 pin, I believe. And it seems to indicate that if you're not going to use this pin, then you should fit this 100 nanofarad capacitor down to ground, which is what I've done. I noticed Julian did that as well, but he, he didn't mention it. Um, Again, as he's done, I've taken out a couple of um, these connections to my breakout down here, um, the RTS and the DTR. I don't actually know what they are. Um, again, I, I kind of feel a bit out of my depth here, um, but I believe we can use one of them, or e either or, I believe, to reset an Arduino if that's what we're using this for, which is my intention. So I thought I'd break those out. Um, was doing a little bit of reading about it and I think we can take uh, the DTR to the reset line on the Arduino through a capacitor. Um, I did contemplate fitting the capacitor into this design but I decided to leave it off. Um, so I've got options of what I can do with that. I'm not sort of boxing myself in. Um, and that, that seems to be about it for the, for the circuit. Um, so I then converted that to a PCB, um, uh, which we've got here. I'm not going to go over the routing too much. 
Um, what, I was, what was interesting, what prompted me to make the video was I started to notice a few differences on the Easy EDA user interface. The first thing I noticed was I don't remember these plus and minus being here before. Maybe they were, but I just don't remember them. Perhaps they just look different. Um, and there's also this one here, which is zoom to fit. Um, again, I don't remember that being there. This user interface seemed to look a little different. So I think Easy EDA have probably um, done an update. Um, and then what really made my day was when I clicked into the 3D view. Now, the 3D view on um, Easy EDA in the past has only allowed you to view a blue a circuit board like this one, which still seems to be the default. Um, but I noticed over here, colors, board color. We actually get the choice now of um, what color board we want, which I thought was great. I, th I, I just baffled me why they've never done this before because it seemed like such an easy addition to the software. Um, I don't know why they didn't do it, but this, this looks much better now. We can um, choose all different color circuit boards here. So we've got the red, the white, which I think white looks horrible. Um, you get the black silk screen, I just think it looks terrible. Um, the yellow, which I was contemplating doing this board in yellow, but I'm not sure that they will do the um, assembly surface on a yellow board, so I might be restricted. Um, and then the black, uh, which, which doesn't look great in this uh, rendering, but I think it looks better in real life. Um, and then we've got purple, which I think is possibly a new color. I've never never seen purple before. Um, but I just thought that was great. It was a, a neat little addition they've put into the software. It just makes this look so much better. I really can't decide what color I prefer. Well, like I said, we might be limited on the um, the manufacturing process. But anyway, I thought I'd just mention it seems like Easy EDA have uh, updated their software. So I don't know if I'll make this board or not. Um, I've never done anything surface mount before, and I think the assembly service might be expensive. So I don't know. Anyway, catch you later.